former President Donald Trump is not thrilled with the proposed date for his trial on election interference charges. In a court filing on Thursday, the Office of Special Counsel Jack Smith proposed the trial relating to the former president's efforts to overturn the 2020 presidential election should begin on January 2nd, 2024, and take no longer than four to six weeks. Well, I mean, there you go, right to a speedy trial. Uh, now, of course, taking to... Truth, truth, central. The former president raged about how this was election interference. Deranged Jack Smith has assessed for a trial in the Biden indictment to take place on January 2nd, just ahead of the important Iowa caucuses. Only an out-of-touch lunatic would ask for such a date one day into the new year and maximum election interference with Iowa. Yes, that's right. Uh, so in his mind, uh, a trial concerning Trump's election interference is itself election interference. That, that, that's the, uh, apparently the four dimensional Donald Trump chess that he is, uh, that he is playing. And then they say, there's Donald Trump, an intellectual. Trust me. I'm like a smart person. Big brain. The biggest brain. Person, woman, man, camera, TV. Wow. Okay. Uh, anyway, <laughs> he continues. Such a trial, which should never take place due to my First Amendment rights. Wrong, actually. Uh, and massive Biden corruption, unproven, should only happen if at all after the election. The same with other fake Biden indictments. Election interference. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, this is not a First Amendment case. You don't have freedom of speech to incite a rebellion. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, according to U.S. District Judge uh, Tanya Chutkin, Mr. Trump, like every American, has a First Amendment right to free speech, but that right is not absolute. In a criminal case such as this one, the defendant's free speech is subject to the rules. So uh, this is actually, you know, referring to whether or not he can discuss like the entirety of the case, which could again be interference, obstruction, witness tampering, etc. So they want to prevent Donald Trump from doing that, uh, you know, by uh, limiting the things that he can talk about when it comes to the trial. But in general, yes, there are limits to free speech. Again, one of those limits is the fact that you cannot incite uh, insurrection. So, you know, one of those things. Uh, now, Secondly, according to the Daily Beast, prosecutors working on three different case on the three different cases Donald Trump is facing. Three, three. These are federal cases. Uh, these are criminal cases. Uh, they all wanted earlier trial dates. Judges, however, gave into Donald Trump's demands for more time. So he wanted more time. He wanted delay, delay, delay. Uh, keep pushing it back, keep pushing it back. Of course, until after the election. Now, uh, Jack Smith explained in his own filing why he chose this date. Quote. A January trial date would vindicate the public's strong interest in a speedy trial. An interest guaranteed by the Constitution and federal law in all cases. True. But a particular significance here, where the defendant, a former president, is charged with conspiring to overturn the legitimate results of the 2020 presidential election, obstruct the certification of the election results, and discount citizens' legitimate votes. So look, uh, I'm going to tell you why uh, Trump wants a trial after the election. I mean, I'm pretty sure you already know. If he wins, he thinks he'll be able to basically make everything go away. Uh, either pardon himself or whatever, stop the trial, and then go on to punish his enemies. It's, it's essentially a uh, power grab that he's planning in order to save his own skin. And look, it's the most obvious thing in the world if you know anything about Donald Trump, if you've been paying attention to him at all. Yes, he has these tendencies, these authoritarian tendencies, in relation to defending himself. And he will do whatever he can to defend himself. And look, at the end of the day, he needs that office, the you know privileges and protections of being president of the United States, the most powerful person in the world, to protect him. Which is why, of course, uh, watch, uh, one of the watchdog groups, Citizen for uh, Ethics in Washington, among others, have been trying to show that Trump shouldn't even be allowed to run in this election that he has already disqualified himself 
from running due to the 14th Amendment. I guess you just came out to agree. The Federalist Society. I am not kidding. Here's a statement uh, from a paper that dropped on Friday. In it, a pair of conservative legal scholars make the same argument. The progressives, of course, and these watchdog groups have been making for quite some time. Um, in an in-depth According to Common Dreams, analysis of Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, William Baud of the University of Chicago and Michael Stokes Paulson of the University of St. Thomas contend that the clause remains of direct and dramatic relevance today, even though it arose from the particular historical situation and acute problem arising in the aftermath of the Civil War. Namely, the decision by Southern states to send supporters of secession and rebellion to Congress. Fast forward a century and a half, they write, the events surrounding the efforts to overturn the results of the presidential election of 2020 have sparked renewed scholarly, judicial, and political interest in Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. Uh, now, by the way, again, these are not lefty, lefty, libby libs, right? These are, again, very right-wing members of the Federalist Society. Quote, several of the people involved in these events, most notably the defeated President Donald Trump, have previously taken oaths to support the Constitution. If they engaged in or gave aid and comfort to an insurrection against a constitutional government, Section 3 would appear to bar them from holding office again. Baden Paulson wrote that Section 3 is, quote, self-executing, operating as an immediately, uh, immediate disqualification from office without the need for additional action by Congress. Making the argument that Donald Trump should not be allowed to run at all. And not only, by the way, uh, in this case, Congress needs to do absolutely nothing because Donald Trump would be disqualified from running, uh, but also it would apply whether or not Donald Trump is convicted at any of these trials. And Section 3 also stipulates that a two-thirds vote by both chambers of Congress is the only thing that can lift the disqualification on President, uh, former President Donald Trump running for office again. Baden Paulson wrote that the disqualification can and should be enforced by every official state or federal who judges qualifications. So that is uh, probably the strongest statement that I've ever seen on the right when it comes to Donald Trump saying he should not run for office. He should not be, he should be absolutely disqualified and shouldn't even be seeking office at all. Disqualified, barred. Now, do I think that's going to happen? No. I mean, honestly, no. I, I think that uh, there's a lot of people that are too weak, too intimidated to actually uh, stop Donald Trump. And also people that are way too interested in the prospect of Donald Trump winning on the Republican side, especially his supporters. Uh, but I still believe the fact the Federalist Society has joined with the side that is interested in disqualifying Trump from even running, that is not something that I had on my 2023 bingo card. 